in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear friends, you're heartily welcome to this Mass for the sixth Sunday of Ordinary Time. And Alessandro, our wonderful producer, is here guiding us all, and our lovely young married couple, Paul and Giselle. And Cosmo has hit the bottle at the moment. <laughs> um, and he's very quiet at the moment. <laughs> Whoever you are, dear friends, wherever you are in the world, you're heartily welcome to this Mass. In a moment of quiet, we put ourselves, as we always do, into the presence of our loving Lord, asking the Lord to look upon us and all the people we cherish with kindness and with mercy. In you, O Lord, we take refuge. Let us never be put to shame. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In your justice, rescue us. Pay heed to us and save us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. It is you, O Lord, who are my hope, my trust, O Lord, since my youth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and Amen. on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, and Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, If a swelling or scab or shiny spot appears on a man's skin, a case of leprosy of the skin is to be suspected. The man must be taken to Aaron the priest, or to one of the priests who are his sons. The man is leprous, he is unclean. The priest must declare him unclean. He is suffering from leprosy of the head. A man infected with leprosy must wear his clothing torn and his hair disordered. He must shield his upper lip and cry, unclean, unclean. As long as the disease lasts, he must be unclean, and therefore he must live apart. He must live outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, you are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. You are my refuge, O Lord, you fill me with the joy of salvation. Happy the man whose offence is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. O happy the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. You are my refuge, O Lord, you fill me with the joy of salvation. But now I have acknowledged my sins, my guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my offence to the Lord, and you, Lord, have forgiven the guilt of my sin. You, you are my refuge, O Lord, you fill me with the joy of salvation. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord, exult, you just. O come, ring out your joy, all you upright of the heart. 
You are my refuge, O Lord. You fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, whatever you do at all, do it for the glory of God. Never do anything offensive to anyone, to Jews or Greeks or to the Church of God. Just as I try to be helpful to everyone at all times, not anxious for my own advantage, but for the advantage of everybody else, so that they may be saved. Take me for your model, as I take Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our mind, so that we can see what hope his call holds for us. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus and pleaded on his knees, If you want to, he said, you can cure me. Feeling sorry for him, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Of course I want to, he said, be cured. Then the leprosy left him at once and he was cured. Jesus immediately sent him away and sternly ordered him, Mind you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and make the offering for your healing prescribed by Moses as evidence of your recovery. The man went away, but then started talking about it freely and telling the story everywhere so that Jesus could no longer go openly into that town, but had to stay outside in places where nobody lived. Even so, people from all around would come to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear friends, sometimes we communicate not so much by what we say as by how we actually say it. We've all had the experience probably of someone saying good morning to us in a tone that would wither a cactus. (laughs) When the leper in today's gospel says to Jesus, if you want to, you can cure me. What's the tone of his question? Is he saying, go ahead, you can do it. All you have to do is marshal your resources. Don't worry, you can cure me. Or is the, letter, is the leper taunting Jesus? If you want to, you can cure me. The if notice is in front of the want, not the cure. If, if you want to. The leper does not doubt Jesus' ability to cure. He doubts his goodwill. He questions whether Jesus wants to cure him. Has the leper been a social outcast for so long that he doubts whether anyone will have anything to do with them at all. When people question our good intentions, we tend to get flustered. How does Jesus react to the leper? The translation that we read says that Jesus feels sorry for him. But most of the early Greek manuscripts says that Jesus fumed, was very angry at the question of the leper. The New English Bible tries to compromise and says, 
Jesus reacted with warm indignation. <laughs> now, what warm indignation would look like on a clear day? <laughs> I must say, <laughs> I have no idea. Jesus protests when he says, Of course I want to. Why are you questioning me? Be cured. Then he stands sternly orders this man to say nothing to anyone. Jesus tells this man to be quiet, but he broadcasts the story wherever he goes. And while the cured man now roams around freely around the town, Jesus hides in places where nobody lives. Somehow they seem to have changed places. This brief encounter between Jesus and the leper with its strained exchanges and emotions gives us a fascinating insight into the ministry of Jesus. It gives us the opportunity to ask ourselves what kind of Jesus emerges from Mark's portrait Mark, the author of the first gospel, is well known for presenting a very human Jesus. In his gospel, Jesus demonstrates human feelings and strong emotions. He's critical. He's angry. He's impatient. He's fearful. The portrait prompts questions about our own understanding of Jesus. Do you think of Jesus as a person who never gets ruffled at all? Is he the kind of person who never sweats over anything? Does Jesus have his own private reactions to people and events? Does he ever blow up and lose his temper? Does his anger show when people start to question his good intentions? Does he ever become tired when people treat him like a mobile relic wandering around without accepting his teaching that no amount of healing no amount of healing is going to exempt people from suffering and from loss. Is he ever afraid of people's limitless expectations? Does he get annoyed when people misrepresent him? So he tells them, stay quiet for God's sake. Don't go mouthing around about what has happened to you. Better say nothing than to run around giving false impressions all the time. Is he ever surprised when people actually do trust him? Does he get nervous when people want to use him for their own peculiar causes? Does he bless God when somebody gets his name right? He's Elijah, he's Moses, he's John the Baptist, he's one of the prophets. Does the pressure ever get so intense that he makes for somewhere that has no addresses, that the place he really wants to be sometimes is where no one lives? Do professional healers need time off. Does Jesus ever get tired of living in a field hospital where people come to bleed him? So much so that he longs for a lonely place. These are a few of the questions that are raised by Mark in his Gospel. They've got timeless quality about them for they address our own understanding of Jesus. Mark's 
portrait of Jesus is often blunt, often shocking. Perhaps that's why Mark's Gospel was appointed to be read so rarely in the life of the liturgies of the Church. The work of Mark waited until the 1960s before it was incorporated regularly into the Sunday liturgy of the Church. You wonder why. Mark believes for sure that Jesus is the Son of God, but he also portrays him in such a human light that everyone can identify with him, immersed in the strengths and in the limitations of humanity. The Jesus we meet in Mark's Gospel is real, alive, always struggling to be authentic, struggling to do the generous thing. For many Christians, it is Mark who gives us the most moving account of the Lord's commitment to a broken and fragile humanity. In previous centuries, Mark was ignored. Now, the church is rediscovering his gospel like a lost treasure. And the good news, dear friends, is when we rediscover the gospel of Mark, we rediscover the person of Jesus, the one who is forever close to us. <clears throat> like the leper, we cry out to Christ, who alone can cure us of all our troubles and weakness. We belong to him and are called to do everything for the glory of God. We pray for the Pope and all clergy and religious in their vocation to bring healing to the world through Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we prepare to begin our Lenten journey this week, we pray to the gardener of the resurrection for the wisdom to water what is holy in our spiritual lives and uproot what is wicked. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for peace, unity and prosperity in war-torn Yemen and secure passage for sh Red Sea shipping. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Good. Thank you, Giselle and Paul, very much. Dear friends, thank you for your prayer petitions. And I've got two very short ones this week. Dear Father Dennis, I was so upset to see how much damage the storm did and caused in your beautiful garden. Please use the enclosed to help towards the expenses of repair, however you see fit. Your garden is a real joy and forms so much part of your garden mass. Thank you to you and your team so much for all that you do and the preparations you all make for the celebration of Sunday Mass. God bless you all. Dear Father Dennis and devoted Mass team, your lovely garden, so damaged in the high winds, is definitely sorry to see. Heartily agree. May you be guided and helped as you need in your efforts to repair. We made a small donation through the QR code you provide at the end of Mass to help towards your repairs. We appreciate your Mass, your reflections, your dedication, and the lovely spirit that each of you bring to your ministry here. Thank you. May you and the worldwide community who join in celebrating this Mass each week be blessed and strengthened as we remain committed to bringing God's love and peace to our world. Thank you very much.
God our Father, we bless you that people entrust their prayers to us. They pray because they believe. We recommend all these needs in the name of the one you call beloved, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Paul, thank you very much.
pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence for ever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs as in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, <coughs> broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Philip, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Okay. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. In the, kingdom, in the power and the glory. And glory. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, <clears throat> Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. During Alessandro's filming, during our communion time here, you will have noticed there were three icons on the altar, all by our beloved brother Richard. The central one was of the servant of God, John Bradburn of Mutemwa. And Mutemwa was a leprosy settlement in Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe. 
where John Bradburn stayed for 10 years of his life, caring for the leprosy patients as his brothers and sisters, sharing everything he had and refusing to leave, which ultimately led to his murder on the 12th of September 1979. In this poem, he reflects on the joy living in the leper colony. Chigona. A long reclining wall of granite rock, a little mountain leaning on the sky, a western limit, cloister-like, a lock against intrusion on our privacy. Chigona means can do. Or you are able to climb me with a minimum of strain. But strong is this Chigona, ancient, stable. Above the verdant firmness of the plain, when every morn I walk through this enclosure, where in our sheltered leper folk abide. I look upon Shikona's bright composure, backed by an azure sky where falcons glide. And these, me seems, it seems our village is a ship riding at anchor on the ocean's lip. When all my world-wide wandering began, I was not able to enjoy the world. I was captive, shackled in a span of fickle hopes and flagged till they were furled. I well recall a lofty wall of rock gleaming alongside of St. Vincent Port at Cape Verde Island. A most charming shock after a sea more endless than I sought. So here and now, below the modest height of this Shigona at our side, as up I look into the azure sky, Backing the granite, whence the falcons glide, I think the far-off days of long ago held less of joy than these and more of woe. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, dear friends, for joining us in our Mass and a very special Thanks to those of you who are stubbornly still, after all this time, helping our charitable outreach here at Redemptus Publications. It is deeply appreciated and deeply needed. So it is goodbye <laughs> from us as Cosmo continues to destroy the room. <laughs> 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 when he grows up, he's going to be a quality tester. <laughs> God bless you all. Thank you, dear friends. <laughs>